Hey guys, it's David from mdbootstrap.com. In this video, we're gonna learn what is JavaScript, what is the story behind this programming language, why is it so important, and finally, what you can do with it today. So, without further ado, let's get started. JavaScript is definitely having momentum right now, so in this video we're gonna learn how did it all started and what we can do with JS today. JavaScript was created by Brendan Eich in 1995. Brendan was one of the person working on Netscape Navigator, a main competitor to Internet Explorer. JavaScript is called a client-side programming language because that was the only programming language which could run in a browser. For many years JavaScript wasn't considered as a serious programming language. It was mostly used to add some shiny bells and whistles to our website. Now, it's been over 25 years since JavaScript was created, so let's see what JS can do today. Look at the following logos. Do you know all these companies and projects? I bet you do. All of them utilize JavaScript in their projects and applications. So, what JS can do today? On the front-end side, we have a variety of frameworks like React to build amazing websites, WebRTC, which allows us to video call in the browser, Canvas, which helps us to visualize the data. We can even use JavaScript for augmented reality and progressive web apps, which allows us to change your website into a mobile app. Today, JavaScript is no longer only a client-side language. Thanks to a Node.js, we can use it to build a backend part of our apps. We can build native apps, which you can upload to App Store, or Google Store, or even create a desktop application. And it's not all. You can even use JavaScript for artificial intelligence or hardware solutions like IoT. So let's have a look at some examples. Let's start with front-end. Let's talk a little bit about Angular View and React. All these three frameworks helps us to maintain DOM, compile SCSS, some of them utilize TypeScript, which introduce a lot of object-oriented programming features, which weren't there in JS before. So if we look at pages like uh, PayPal, Netflix, even Instagram or Lego, they all use one of those frameworks. And if we check GitHub Star Counter, you're gonna see that in, in the recent years, they become very, very popular and they are still growing very fast. Let's talk about WebRTC and WebSockets. Nowadays, during pandemic time, most probably you have tried already some web conference. That wouldn't be possible without WebRTC, which allows us to do a video conference in a web browser. This technology is utilized by Google Hangouts or Zoom. Other interesting technology are WebSockets, which allows us to chat real-time in a web browser. So if you are using Messenger, if you are using WhatsApp, most probably you are using this technology. Now let's talk about Canvas and 3JS. These amazing libraries allows us to create animations like this one. As you can see, it's fully interactive, it's rendered in the web browser and there are plenty of them. This library also allows us to create movies and animations. So we can create a full video scene just with the use of JS. We can even create games almost imitating Counter-Strike or other like Mario Bros, which you know probably from your childhood. It may sound uh, like uh, rocket science, but today JavaScript also allows us to create augmented reality projects. So there are plenty of them, and as you can see with use of certain libraries, we can really extend our perception of the world. Another milestone in JavaScript development was progressive web apps. This technology allows us to change any website into application on our mobile phone regardless of operating system. So technically we can change our page, we can pin our page into our home screen and give it application feel and look. That way we can make our application work offline, so when our mobile phone isn't connected to the internet. One of the most famous example was Twitter Lite PWA application. So Twitter made its website 
uh, PWA enabled and thanks to that user were able to use it as an application without installing extra application from uh, Google Store or App Store. Twitter says that its light version can save up up to 70% on the data while loading 30% faster. If what you heard already wasn't astonishing, now let's talk about the backend. For a very long time, JavaScript was considered as a client-side programming language, which means it wasn't capable of processing a backend, but that has changed thanks to Node.js, which is a JavaScript engine which allows us to create a backend using JavaScript. I think it's enough to say that the pages like PayPal, Twitter or Netflix are built using Node.js. We already talked about changing our website into PWA, but now let's talk about something even more interesting. We already know that thanks to using Angular, React or Vue we can create astonishing websites, but thanks to native script and similar technologies, what we can do is we can create a fully functional native application without using languages like Swift or Kotlin, which we had to use before. That means that just with use of JavaScript and native script, we can create an application which will be compiled into both versions, one for iOS and one for Android phones, which you can then upload into Google Store, into App Store and start selling there. But if you think that's cool, wait for it. With JavaScript, you can now create a desktop application. Thanks to framework like Electron, you can create a fully functional desktop application which you can install on your Windows or Mac or Unix. So I think it's enough to mention that applications like Visual Studio Code, Facebook Messenger or Slack are created with use of JavaScript and Electron. Other interesting fact is that you can use JS for machine learning. So if you're a fan of artificial intelligence, you should try libraries like TensorFlow. This allows you to develop a fully functional machine learning models in JavaScript. We talked a lot about the software, but JavaScript can also work with the hardware. So if you're a fan of the Internet of Things, you should check, for example, IoT.js, library which allows you to use JavaScript for your hardware, for your Internet of Things projects. So that's it for today. I hope that you now see how powerful this programming language, which started as a side project, is nowadays. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video.